Welcome back, episode 15, Last Man In Podcast, and Cameron, it is just me and you this week. There's no Daniel. Without Dan. There's just... Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just, just a poetic yeah. entrance. That's what I do. Awesome. You might hear the acoustics might be different. It's because we're out of Dan's house. And, and do another, ba- yet another basement. Yet another basement. My room. It'll be actually, my turn eventually. <laughs> it's 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 my room. Uh, there will be no field correspondent in Kobe this week, so there's gonna be no barking in the background. We might have a field correspondent in your dog, maybe. Uh she's probably sleeping. Unless somebody like comes to the door, then she'll freak the f, f out, and that won't be as. Well, there you go. Good. But I don't think anyone's going to come to the door. Well, there you go. Yeah. So what happened this week in Jets? Well, let's just we, talk about gonna... what came through the grapevine right now. Oh. Like today. Like today right away? Like, like today. Oh. With... Well, well, at filming this podcast, it is 5.30. Yeah. Don't look at my clock. It's 10 minutes fast. That's fine. Uh, it's 5.30. Okay. Jets play in half an hour. Yes. Who against the New Jersey Devils. Fun fact about the New Jersey Devils. I know you hate fun facts. Their penalty kill right now is at point six 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 six. Continuing, which is freaky. So what you're saying is, is the Jets need to have three chances and, and score, score on one, one of them. them to keep it consistent. Yes. Wow, it's like a match made in heaven. Yeah. Woo. But what did we hear about the news that just came through the grapevine pipeline? Like right now at five thirty. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, the Jets still suck, actually. Oh, it's yeah? Just, yeah. Tonight, they actually have a chance to have a three-game win streak this season. But True. they have an added sniper on the team. No, I'm not talking about Chris Thorburn. I am talking about Evander Kane. Citizen. Citizen Kane. He's yeah. back in the lineup, so that's okay. A little rushed. You think he's a little rushed? I feel like it's a little rushed. Cause they How said, long has it been? Well, they said three game, to four weeks, Game right? one was what? We are October 30th today. Game one was October 7th. 9th? 9th. Well, yeah, it was the 9th. 9th. Yeah, it was a Thursday. So that's 21 days, so that's three weeks. So that's bang on. But they said, what I heard at least from Twitter and stuff, they said that he probably wouldn't even play this road trip. They're going to have him on the road trip just in case he was okay. And then, I guess, they're just like, okay, you can play. Well, we all like, know what happened when, when Evander Kane, he got cleared for contact pending doctor's approval. We all know what happens then. He goes to, he's like, nope, I'm only answering questions about hockey, not questioning or answering questions about the team. And I don't want to get traded. I never said that. But I should be in the game. I should be on Evander Kane. I'll bring my A game no matter what. That's, I don't know. So, I feel like sometimes with Evander Kane, there's like, he holds a gun to their head. and Like, hypothetically, I'm not like stereotyping him or no, anything like that. All. I'm just saying, that's how they feel with Evander Kane. Like, they have to be very, like, tiptoe be very gingerly about things with Evander Kane. Because if he's upset, he will go to the media. And he's not afraid to say things within the media. Yeah. Uh, he also had a pretty interesting tweet today. The only reason why I saw it yeah. um, is because somebody else retweeted it. Yeah. I tried to re- retweet it, yet it wouldn't let me because I'm still blocked. Fun fact, Greg and I are both blocked by Evander Kane because when we were younger, uh, a couple years ago when Evander Kane, those restaurant we, running we've out on his... talked about this before, but... Oh, his running out on his bills situation. I like this. Uh, we... Made some jokes about it, and obviously Evander uh, Kane or someone didn't enjoy it. There was a group of us. I yeah. think there was about four or five of us that sat in and all insulted him and got blocked that night. Yeah, no like, racial. As, just like, oh, no, probably got racial. a concussion from running out of the restaurant so fast or something. Yeah. What was this tweet? Well, I tried to retweet it, but it said, uh-oh, that didn't work. Please try retweeting again. <laughs> in other words, I'm blocked. Okay, so he says, hashtag find me at the top of the circle, add Mark Shifley 55 Let's stay ten feet away from each other for the first five minutes. Thanks. Just a, just ah. a little joke. See, little he's punk. got a weird sense. He of does humor. have a weird sense of humor. Well, like even uh, week two or three of uh, NFL, he's a Redskins fan. Like people already know this, and he was like, "Yeah, the the Washington are," and then he oh, just yeah. asterisk, 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 asterisk. They had a really bad game today, or had a really yeah. good game today. And it's like his sense of humor is very different. But a lot of people look at like Zanuck and they're like, "Well, he's he's older, right?" He's 23, he, he's 23 years old. Like, we all do that kind of stuff to just get a rise out of people. Like, we all just fuck with each other. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. So he just does what he does because he's young. 
Like, maybe at a 30-year-old, I'd maybe question his morals, but, like, as a 23-year-old, you can't really be like, hey. But see, here's where people question it. It's because, it's because I think, Evander Kane's been in the league for, like, this will be his fourth year, fifth year. Fifth, fifth, fifth year now. There you go. He started when he was 18, right? Yeah. So, this will be... Maybe his, fifth or sixth, yeah. No, it'll be fifth for sure at the Crosby's most. Crosby's in his tenth. Yeah, that's scary. That's... Thought. Messed up. You want to hear a weird thing about that? Okay, you know, Sidney Crosby wears number 87, right? Because sure. of the birth year he's yeah. in. Yeah. You know who else also wears his birth year? And it's his draft year this year. Connor McDavid. Crosby's been in the league for 10 years. Isn't that crazy to think about? Like, that's when I really started watching hockey. It's like, for sure, like, where I could, like, yeah, rattle was... off most rosters or, like, two thirds of a team's roster. Crosby's been in the league for <laughs> 10 years. Um, If Crosby was a. TV show, he'd be syndicated, and he would put he would qualify for re reruns. Yeah, because you have to get a hundred episodes, and technically it'd be like around be, season four or something. He'd, like that. No, he'd be season ten, but he'd be yeah, like, I know, but that's when syndication is oh, like oh, season four. But yeah, no, exactly. That's messed. Right? Yep, that's crazy. Yeah, but anyways, back to Evander Kane though. It's he's been in the league for five years, so the the he's in syndication. Well, no, not really. He's, played, he's probably played over 100 games. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but what I was getting, I was getting yeah, back no, to no. the point oh. of, like, people say Evander Kane's older. He's older in terms of NHL because I guess the average NHL career only lasts, what, five to seven years, I'd say, if you're well, lucky. Well, yeah, because you got players like Colton Orr and Fraser McLaren that skew that a little bit, even though they played a lot longer than they should have in the NHL. Of course. But in terms of that, it's that it? you'd think the growing up would have happened. He has yeah. grown up a little bit, but not to the extent that I guess everyone would have would like to see him grow up. So okay. that's that's why that's where we're sitting at right now. He still has a better sense of humor than Glenn Healy. Yeah. Why? What did Glenn Healy say? Oh, he's no, he's just dumb with I don't know. If if, if you ever watch Hockey in Canada or anything Glenn Healy's on, he just tries to like make funny jokes and they just miss. You know how like You'll be at the at a restaurant with your dad, and he'll try to like make a joke to the waitress, and it just completely missed, miss. And you look at the waitress, you're like, "Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed." And she like she's just has no clue what to say because like it's a comment way out of left field, and you're like, "Oh gee." Oh yeah. And she like she's caught off guard. She's like, uh, mm, uh, "Would you like more drinks?" Uh, like not really sure what to do, so. That's the way Glenn Healy's humor is. I feel like if you were at a restaurant with Glenn Healy, he would make a lot of off-color comments or just jokes that aren't funny that he finds hilarious. Like, he'd be like, say something stupid and just laugh for five minutes while the waitress stands there and is just like, I don't know what to say. I I, I, I can't I, walk I, away. This is my job. So <laughs> I can't fathom what you're thinking about in your mind. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Um, since last podcast, the Jets have played how many games? Three games. Three games. We'll wrap it up real quick. What was the score against the Ke- uh, Bolts? 4-2. Okay, I just want to mention something. Steven Samkos loves playing the Jets franchise. Oh, does he ever? In forty in 29 games played, he has 41 points. Oh, that's what that 29... Oh, I thought you meant, like, since his broken leg, he had 41 no, points. No, like... That's just, in Jets. Just against Jets Thrasher's franchise, he has 41 points. Wow. I'm not sure... We've got to be in his top five for Ooh. most points against us, or anyone in the Southeast has to be up there. Well, that's or like... Or were uh, previously in the Southeast. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so you're saying if, like, hypothetically, uh, Tampa play plays tr- uh, Winnipeg in the Stanley Cup Final, we're fucked. Well, I mean, if if Winnipeg meets Tampa in the final anyways, um, that's awesome. I'd take that. Even if we got swept, that means they're in the, we made playoffs miraculously. Um, but a- any team who plays Tampa, they're worried about Steven Stamkos. Oh, and course. especially with his new line mate, the Drow Show, Jonathan oh, Durang. God. He scored his first NHL goal against it. There's two things I want to see that game. A goal by Steven Stamkos, assisted by Durang. That was the first goal. And then three or... Er, there was a goal in between, and then Jonathan Drain scored his goal. Yeah. So I was very excited about that. One thing I did notice, that he stood out a mile and a half. And Greg found a crazy stat on this guy right before he started recording. Andre Palat, first off, second year in the league. He's a, Well, he, technically third year. He played two year. He played in the lockout turn season for 14 games. Okay, well, third year in the league, he wears an assistance A. Now, I'm not sure, maybe it's because Hedman's out and Callahan's out that he has it, but the fact that they felt they can give it to him, considering the players on that team is 
awesome for him. The fact and, that he's a second year player. Oh, and he was players getting an assistant he was captain. up and down the ice the whole game. His line of uh, I forget who. What, oh no, he's on Stamkos Yeah, Stamper and then their Strang. second line is unbelievable too. Tyler that's, Johnson, and Nikita without, Kucherov, and Vladimir Nemestikov. Yeah, that's a sweet line. Say that ten times fast, though. Yeah, that was tough. Um, <laughs> that's tough to get through. But what did you find out about Andre Pilat that you told me right before this? Like, I can... So, I was just looking at... Uh, there was a tweet that came in saying that there's 17 NHL scouts at the Devils-Jets game tonight. Yep. And Cam mentioned that, oh, it's probably for Vladimir... No, uh, oh. Adam Larson. Adam Larson and Or Lockdown. I thought Andre Lokteanov, Andre but apparently Lockdown. he's a free agent right now, actually. I just oh, remembered really? that. So, so Lokteanov's not playing. So I don't know who would be in the lineup oh. for that. I guess so they're scouting Jets and uh, Devils. Be. I don't know. Maybe, okay. like, maybe Zajac is in the mix for talks. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I don't or know. Henrik. I don't know. I guess. We'll find out. Um, But uh, what was I going to mention? Yeah. So they they have those... Scouts there, and Cam mentioned Adam Larson, so I went through, like, the... The, the year picks. he was drafted. Yeah, the year he was drafted to see, like, who got drafted after him. Well, Andre Platt was drafted after him, but Adam Larson was picked fourth. Where was Andre Platt picked? 208th. In the seventh round, the fourth last pick, and they got Andre Palat, the guy that could have won the Calder Trophy last year. He, he was, was in the running. He him and Tyler Johnson. He was runner-up? He was runner-up. There you go. That's ridiculous. Pick seventh round. You want to you want to talk about Detroit? Yeah, look, look who's the GM of uh, Lightning? Steve know. Steve Zerman. Zerman. Yeah. Steve Zerman. <laughs> yeah. Where's he from? Detroit. He learned a few things, I guess. On his days off, De- he went into the office. Yeah, Detroit. Just like, hey, Stevie, why? You want to know how to freaking build the team? Yeah, come here. here you go. We'll tell you. <laughs> well, I, you so- pick guys, and and the crazy thing which we found. He played on the Drummondville Voyagers yep. that year with... Voltigeurs, s- Greg. Vol- it's not Voyagers, it's Voltigeurs? No, Voltigeurs. Volt- okay, whatever. It's like a battalion dude. And he played alongside 8th overall pick that year, Sean Couturier, on his line. Yeah. And tied him in points, yet Couturier got pick 8th, and somehow Platt slips all the way down to... Well, I guess uh, maybe at round. the time he was smaller or something. Like, it I has guess. to be... It had to have been a size thing or an attitude thing. But it's clearly not an attitude thing anymore if he's yeah. an assistant captain. Nope, not at and all. And size, he came in. Size and you know what? Size really doesn't matter because who went fourth over her fourth round to the Flames that you read in that same draft? Johnny Goudreau. Exactly, and he's doing pretty good right now. So. And another funny note about that draft is Edmonton, as you guys know, no surprise Edmonton had the first overall pick in that draft too. Who'd they take that? Ah, uh, that was the. Was that R N H R N H? Okay, the Nuge. That's fine. I, I believe that's the R N H. Yeah. Okay. Um. Because that's the year we picked Shifley. But I went down their second and third round picks that okay. they had that were first overall. That there also could have players, been Palat. There are more players playing in... Well, let's just be honest here. The seventh round pick for Tampa is playing more regular minutes than the second... Uh, the seventh round pick for Tampa is playing more minutes than the second round first overall pick for Edmonton. The 31st pick. The 31st pick versus the 208th pick. Which was who? David Musil? Musil, yeah. The defenseman? Yeah. Okay, well, it, that yeah, also it's, shows it's not always like where you pick. It's the system you that you put in, the dev- how you pick, the development. It's like, as we found out, like, as everyone who's been watching hockey has found out, hockey isn't always about taking the best option. It's about, or it's not always about taking, like, the greatest, like, the clear-cut number one. It's about taking... The, the the option that best best suits you because yeah. let's go back even last year around this time like there was Nathan uh, nope two years ago now Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Duran but there was also a player in the WHL Seth Jones that Colorado has needed defense for a while and yeah. everyone's like well they're clear cut Seth Jones is his dad Popeye Jones a uh, basketball player there and. Uh, Oh, of course. Like, obviously they're going to take him. He's a defenseman. They need defense. And then once they named Patrick Roy, he said out loud, he's like, I'm taking McKinnon. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously he knew something that they did not. Because now McKinnon is... Greg and I went to the well, Avs game. He's a little slumpy right now, but it's the sophomore Of course. Thing, but... but it's like what he did last year was oh, ridiculous. Yeah. And on top of that, like, he, you can tell he's going to be something special. Oh, Greg and I went sure. to the Avs game, and Greg, like, pointed out to me, like... 
McKinnon is so good that like he forced Matt Duchesne basically off that line onto a line with Tangay and Aginla, and he gives Colorado an option, hypothetically, if they want to, to trade Matt Duchesne for a top tier D if they want to. Which we can touch on in a bit, yep. where maybe he could go. Yep. Um, the other thing is, players that are playing in the NHL that were drafted after the first round of that year, that Edmonton could have picked. Okay. If you're Edmonton, what's the one thing Edmonton needs right now? Defense. Or? Goalie. John Gibson, how about that? Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, how about a Wait. big centerman? Victor Rask. There you go. Big centerman Victor Rask. Where's he playing? Nashville. Uh, Carolina. The <laughs> 06 really? and 2 Carolina Hurricanes, yeah. Okay, well, I guess yeah. it didn't work out too well for Carolina, but <laughs> nonetheless. Well, he hasn't really had the chance to show much. Of course. Yet. Stuart Percy. Ooh, he's doing okay. No, sorry, his first round. My bad. That's my bad. No, well, no, no, sorry. No, he's third round. Stuart Percy's third round. Okay. Tyler Biggs was first round yeah. this year. But see, we can um, nitpick... Adam Lowry! Another player. All right. But see, we can nitpick too, but then again, oh, yeah, it's the right. system as you're, well. You're because like, right. if you look at like, even we've done this on a podcast prior, the one... The next pick later for Jets, we could have we Sean could play Couturier. that game. It's the next one would be Sean Couturier. The or even if we go farther back, if we go farther back, you know what, Zach Bogosian, Alex Petrangelo, um, oh, well, yeah. uh, uh, Alexander Burmistrov, Braden Shen. I mean, I know Burmy was promising. Braden Shen probably wouldn't. Be, I don't know we if we could have the any... Flyers team. We could have Couturier and Shen right now. Yeah, I know. I sit here you in my brand funny. new Couturier jersey as you, well. You know what you should do is you should What's get that? a Dougie Hamilton. Jersey? No, Boston jersey. Why do you get that? a Jonas Brody Minnesota jersey? Then you can have picks seven through ten. Oh yeah, because they have I'm, a Shifley. <laughs> might, might as well. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be against Dougie Hamilton. Especially twenty seven is my favorite number. You know so. what? You could just go from R and H and just go all the way to Couturier. Even Dougie Hamilton. There you go. Yeah. Just well, Landis Cog jersey. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing. Johnny Huberto. Huberto. You yeah. know what? The, yeah, I I don't mind the Florida. Jerseys. Adam Larson. No, <laughs> I wouldn't get Adam Larson jersey. Depending what team he ends up on. What happened to Adam? What happened? I don't know. You just never. Did Ryan New Stroll? Jersey happen? No, I wouldn't get no. Adam really, jersey. I love Stroman. If I was gonna get an Islanders jersey, I'd get that. Tra- Ryan Travis Stroman. Ha- Hamannick. That's, Stroman. That's his Sorry, I would get a Stroman. Hamannick jersey or I get a Tavares jersey. Fair enough. Did you see the E60 on Hamannick? Yes, that was tremendous. Excellent. I'll tweet the link. It, oh, it was really hard tremendous. to find, but from our account, I'll tweet the link. It's give it a watch if you get the chance. Yeah, it's, it's twelve minutes that are very. It's a tearjerker, eh, a little bit. I did I not know that. In this bed that I'm I've said on some. Right I've said some mean things in public to Travis Hamannick at a Jets game, which we will also get to. <laughs> but like, not like I hate you, Travis Hamannick. Just like. You me, me yelling in public, like at a Jets game, is like you're so talented, Travis. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, just like to quickly touch on what the well E60 here was we'll about. talk. Oh yeah, Sorry. unless unless you want to. Touch no, on you go. Okay. No, it's you now. Uh, it mentioned about how his his father passed, and he, you know he had to deal with that, and cope with that at a young age. His father passed when he was ten years old. Yeah, and he kind of used hockey as an escape, and that's one of the reasons why he was at hockey so much was it was just such an escape from the pain. And now that he's in New York Islander, he invites one kid that uh, or family to the game who's missing a parent, which is a tremendous, tremendous thing, and not uh, not enough can be said about how awesome that is. And there needs to be more players in the NHL that do stuff like this. And or, you know what? Maybe there are. They just don't want to yeah. be credited for it, which is totally fine. And I fine. don't think Travis really wanted to be credited with it. I think he was doing it behind the scenes. And well, he's been doing it for three him. years, and only yeah. now. Did they exactly. catch on? Because I'm assuming they tried getting ca- catching wind of the story, and his publicist or someone within for representing Travis Hamnick said, "No, he doesn't want to." Mm-hmm. And then maybe they're just like, "Okay, well, let's do this," but we don't want it to be like, "Oh, Travis does it because of this." Travis does it because he said in the in the video as well, like every time he talks to kids about it, he, it helps him more as well. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, good man, Tobin. But good man, go. Tobin. Good there you go. old man, Tobin. There's yep. a lot of Manitobans out in the NHL. There are some real good Manitobans in the NHL, namely Jonathan Taves. <laughs> Mostly one of them that has two cup rings. And Matt Cove. He's pretty good, too. But, but um, are we going to... What was the score in the Avs game? Just wrap that up, then. 2-1. OT. What were your thoughts on that game? Anything? It's See, I thought the clear. Jets should have lost that one. Let, so, uh, here's the thing. Uh, the one thing that you notice about Colorado, and everyone can say this, is I read on Twitter from people who... 
aren't advanced stat I gurus. Guess, not I'm gurus, still coming around to it. Maybe, I, I, maybe not like gurus, but like I understand advanced stats to the point that I know Colorado's a terrible advanced stat team. Yeah, they are they, awful. They were in a, a, st- a statistical anomaly last year. Like exactly. no one knew how they were doing that good because they're not that good. Like Pose- uh, possession wise, possession. And a lot yeah. of people who don't understand or don't look at advanced stats, they're like, "Well, the Jets dominated them for three periods," but that's the way Colorado plays. They get rope doped. They'll wait for oh, you to get yeah. tired, and then they'll they'll send one of their guys, namely Landeskog, Duchesne, McKinnon, O'Reilly, on a break. Yeah, and that's exactly. what you pointed out first. Thing, like five oh. minutes into the game, you pointed out, which is and now that you've pointed out, I saw it even like in the highlights. I didn't watch the game the other night, but how like what do you hashtag watch the game, Cam? Hashtag watch. Has be a fan. Hashtag be a fan. Be a yeah. fan. Jeez. Yeah. Awesome. I was watching a Flyers game. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, some fan comes to my house wearing a Flyers jersey and they're like, I didn't watch the Jets game. But I'm, I was... but I'm gonna talk about Jets on podcast. <laughs> um no, what do they what do play, uh, players do or teams do to the Jets? So my brother actually pointed this out to me in the Carolina game, but it goes back all the way to the San Jose game. How did San Jose beat us? They beat us by sneaking a forward in between our 2D and setting him on a break stretch pass, pass. Stretch pass Thomas from Hurdle. their own zone to that far blue line, to our defensive blue line. Mm-hmm. And the guy's in on a partial break. They did it in the Carolina game, or they tried to, and they didn't succeed. And they tried to do it again in the Colorado game. And Colorado and they, had a lot of chances. They uh, had a lot of good Duchesne chances. Duchesne had How a How many breakaways did they have? He, they had a few. They had like two or three. Because Duchesne almost put, put one in there, or he had a yeah. glorious chance. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Marvelous player. But the one big <laughs> yeah. thing that I did notice about the Colorado game is that Duchesne kind of seems like the odd man out there, unfortunately. Yep. And I think it all depends on a Ryan O'Reilly trade or maybe but see, him here's signing the thing. When you need- And if you're a Colorado, honestly, if you're a Colorado fan and you're listening to this, let me know if you've gone to games and you notice it too, or if I'm just a crazy person that's off his rocker thinking that they would trade Matt Duchesne. But he is your best player. Him or McKinnon, in my opinion. He brings so much threat in his speed. But offensively, and he's Offensively, yeah. threat. He's Defensively, so he's not that. See, here's the thing. Okay, to just, yeah. I'm not counter-arguing. I'm just adding to the argument. Yeah, or you are just saying it. Oh, yeah, it. go ahead. Um, okay, I'm not disagreeing that he is... Def- yeah. Any team he's any team that would he pretty him. much go to... Well, him. any team in the league would take Matt Shane. I'm not arguing that. Okay. There's very few teams... In the league, that would not have Matt Duchesne on team, and he'd be number one center. Oh yeah, but to counter like or to say like why Colorado would be like have could expend him and like trade him or whatever is because they have three. Okay, Landis Cog's a winger, McKinnon's a center, O'Reilly's a center. O'Reilly, if they traded Duchesne, O'Reilly could just slot on that second line, and he's a two. He's more defense than he is offense, yep, and he's a player who doesn't take penalties. His only penalty last year was off a broken stick that he did not know was broken. Yeah. So he could have gone the whole year without a penalty, exactly. hypothetically. So that would be why. Why do you need two offensive guys? And that's what's happening is that look, it's not that McKinnon's better than Duchesne. It's that McKinnon has better chemistry with Landis Cog and O'Reilly than Duchesne does with those two. So that's yeah. why Duchesne gets a shaft, per se, in playing with future Hall of Famer Aguinla and probably Hall of Famer Tangay. Yeah, potential Hall of Famer in Tangay. Yeah. And if you think about it, like, there's been a lot of good players that have gone through Colorado in the last 10, 10 years. Uh, yeah. Say 15 years. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty historic franchise already. Yes. Um... The one thing that I want to note about Matt, Matt Duchesne is that if they do trade him, the return is very huge for him. Um, It'll be big. Because Joe Sackick, in a, is Joe Sackick GM officially now? I believe so, yes. Well, Joe Sackick, I guess it'll be his first like real big trade. I'm not, I can't remember if he has made a trade or not for a lot. But he's not going to... It's kind of, I guess, the Kevin Shovel day off where he's fine. He's just totally fine sitting, waiting with the Vander Kane as opposed to... Um, like with Sackick, with Duchesne, he's fine using Matt Duchesne. But if he's gonna trade him, he's gonna get his value in return. He's yeah. not gonna get. He's not getting fleeced on it. And another note on that is the guy they drafted first overall last year, Connor Bleakley, is also a centerman. And hmm. not, I'm not saying Hockey DB has him as a center for the Red Deer Rebels. Okay. Or, yeah, yeah. Red Deer Rebels. I said that right. Yeah. No. Um, not that. Uh, where was I going with this? They drafted. Connor Bleakley, and not that he can step in next season or the year after, but for future, and they have other guys 
in their system right now that could step in, like Joey Hishon, who we saw last year for a short time, yep. uh, could step in f- as a third-line guy because... You know, they have a bit of an older team with when they lo- lost P.A. Parento or traded him to Danny Breer in the weirdest trade ever. Uh, for yeah, Danny that Breer. didn't make sense at no, all. It didn't at all. For either know. team. Maybe P.A. Parento wasn't liked. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they do have Maxim Talbot as a third-line center there as well, but he can also play wing. And they have a Gidlin Tange who are aging, so... Maybe they'll keep De- uh, Duchesne just as an asset, or maybe trade him off and try to get more. But right now, is basically like he's uh, an Olympian. Sure, was a spare forward, but he was the yeah. an Olympian. So mm-hmm. obviously, he's good enough to make that roster. That Team Canada could have had Team A, B, and C, and probably still done some damage to every team that they were playing. And just weird, I have the notebook of. Uh, one, our very first podcast, and I wrote like NHL comparables, and I wrote Connor Bleakley. Uh, TSN has NHL comparables on Jay Kopitar. Not a bad NHL comparable. <laughs> there you go. So that's that's could be. So if Connor Bleakley is in the wing in a couple of years, why wouldn't you just say, you know what, I'll bite the bullet and get Max return now? Who, if you're going to trade Evander Kane or someone were to trade Evander Kane, who would or you? Evander Kane. Uh, you mean Matt Duchesne? Matt Duchesne. Sorry, I looked. Well, let's trade him for Evander Kane. Let's do that. Let's pull that trigger. Do it, Chevy. Do it. <laughs> that makes no sense for either team, considering no, they already have a... Well, no, because then you'd have a weird dynamic... Well, not a weird, but... Could you push Shifley to the wing? And make him play second line? Or, no, you... Well, wh- uh, weird fact about Brian Little. He was actually... Uh, Unless he I, was a right winger. A, a right winger when he was drafted. Yeah, right. So you could just put... You'd, you could have... That would give both teams... a. Decent one two punch, maybe Colorado a little more. So it'd be like, well, it'd you be have Ryan O'Reilly and Evander Kane, Kane and, and then, then Gabriel Landis Cog McKinnon. Or McKinnon and Kane. That would be fast. That'd be a very fast line. And then us, we'd have Shifes, Wheeler. Or no, we would have Shifes. Ooh, it'd be weird. It'd be like Lad Duchesne Little. Maybe. No. You'd do Shifes. You'd probably bump Would, Shifes. Or maybe line. you could do like Buff Little wheel. Duchesne. Could you do like Little Duchesne? Or sorry. Little Duchesne Lad? I just said that. Oh yeah. And no, then Wheel, wheel Shife Buff. Yeah. But then you have three right shots. Exactly. And that's one of the things. That that's another thing that we noticed. Is that well, every Colorado line has a trigger man. Pretty much. Like could, Jerome McGinn was a trigger man on their line. Or on that line. McKinnon. Is the trigger guy on is, that line. Is the trigger man on the other line. Yeah. Like, Ryan that's, Riley is left-handed, actually. I well, he was that, that's, but he's left-handed. Oh, well, that's beautiful, though, in terms of... I'm just thinking, now that Kane's back, Evander Kane... They'll have that They finally left, have a right, guy... Right. Jeez. Although, you know what? Kudos to Perot for slotting in and at least yeah. holding his own. Like, he didn't really look terrible. No, he didn't. And he'll fit in nice on that third line again. And yeah. Really well, with Buff and Lowry will be where he'll slot in tonight. Yeah. Um, Very interesting, actually. But, yeah... If Duchesne, just before we yeah, go back I want to the know Jets, who who you would name teams who would oof. maybe be interested. Well, we already I know talked it's super about hypothetical, it. but we talked about it already. You and I did. Okay, uh, a team that has an abundance of defensemen and could use some help up the middle. Not abundance, but some D would be the New York Rangers. Oh yeah, Dan Girardi, Girardi or McDonough. They won't trade McDonough as captain. McDonough, so. You could probably get Girardi and maybe Hagelin or Girardi and like a s- another player for Duchesne. And then maybe another player. It, it would, like The thing is, is if they want to maximize the asset, it might be Duchesne and stuff for great defensemen and stuff. Of course. Well, that's usually yeah. how big trades come together. Um, and just now that you're talking the Rangers, Stepan is back to practicing. Yes. Non-contact, but he's practicing. Exactly. Which is nuts. It was like a month and a half ago <laughs> that he broke his leg. <laughs> so I don't know who he's back They're already. doing something. What is... Uh, they me- are feeding NHL Medical stuff something. is creepy now. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I broke your leg. Like, a week. Don't even worry about it. It's what? like, what? Those, oh, what are those things called on the Planet Namek? Or Planet Namek from Dragon Ball Z. Oh. Ah, oh, they, like, go on these, like, rehabilitation centers and it's just filled with water. And, like, heals all wounds in, like, 24 hours. It's crazy. Oh, and you just go and sit in a bathtub. And for it's like, like that, days. and it, like you just go and rest, and it like heals all your wounds. Oh, yeah. Maybe the NHL has those like cryogenic <laughs> or may, or maybe, fridges. Yeah, or you maybe just they just in. like what they could do is they could just be like, "Hey, go in the hyperbolic time chamber that we invented for six hours, and then you'll come out, 
and you'll age tell everyone, body advanced like a, three months. That's what that, it is. Yeah, that's what the hyperbolic time period was in Dragon Ball Z. Weird. You go in for a day, and it's a year. It's a year in your lifespan, but it's like a day on Earth. So like they would train in there for a year, and then it would only be a day on Earth. Could you imagine that? Like if that actually going away for a exists? year. No, That'd like, be creepy. Like you're in your life, yet it's you come back, you leave October 31st, you come back as November 1st of the same year. And you're but it feels like a year in my life. So we can go and get shredded. Shredded. And then show up next podcast to Dan's. <laughs> be like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Uh, my ears are resting on these muscles. I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> like, though. Yeah. Those, everyone knows those ear muscles that <laughs> strong men have. No, it's like the neck muscle that comes up to your The trapezoid thing? Tra- is that it? Uh, Trapezies? Uh, trapezoids? The I, traps. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't work traps. out. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't. went to the gym yesterday and I did leg day. I understand why people skip leg day. Because <laughs> you're in pain for doing anything. Like walking up the stairs is a chore because I'm like, ugh. Ugh. Stairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Had to oh, take my geez. dog for a walk yesterday, and that was the most painful thing ever. Like a to half an hour walk. Street? Oh, okay. Half That's an hour walk. Hard. I'm like, oh my god, my it's life burning. Um, <laughs> we're well, let's get back to hockey. Yeah, uh, no the Jets Dragons. had one more game that this past week. They played the Canes. I no, did that's not. not right. Yeah, they did. No, Avs. We talked no, about that. No, uh, Islanders. Actually, it was the did Islanders. they? It was called. I didn't the watch that one either. No, 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 no. The the Canes were last podcast. Yeah. Oh, they played the Isles, right? They and played... they even have the team's names here. What was the score in the Isles game? <laughs> wow, this is why... You know what? Just, just you know, quit. Yeah. I'll do this by myself because Dan's gone. Yeah, of course. It'll be Dan, if you're listening to this, you're kicked off. That's just the way it yeah, works. Yeah, we're all... I'm fighting. I'm done. Bye, we're ousting you, you. And Cam, you're ousted for being a Flyers fan and not paying attention to the Jets. Yeah, apparently. Jeez. Isles, what was the score? I don't know. I didn't watch the game. Oh, you're a terrible person. 4-3. <laughs> 4-3? I know oh, they right. had a 3-1 lead and almost blew it. Oh, yeah, right, because, um, well, Kuhlman hit Stu. I saw that highlight. And then, in retaliation, I, I well, maybe not in retaliation, but later on in the period, Scheiss allegedly took an undisciplined penalty, and on that four-minute penalty, Tavares scored. Power play ended because it was in the second half of that uh, penalty. Of the and then, 45 seconds later, Grabo scored to tie the game. Um... <sighs> So, you know what? That's one thing that's consistent. Jets take very undisciplined penalties. Um, and just to wrap up, there are some two milestones that uh, Andrew Ladd hit this week. Uh, was Ian, one of them a hat trick? No. Although, apparently in the Isles game, you guys are like, I'm not listening. Guys, I don't want to watch Jets. With the two Kay. guys who didn't watch the game. I didn't sure. watch the game because I was busy doing other things. And by other things, I mean playing video games. So one You thing couldn't have it on in the background? Sorry. Come on. My room is here. My TV is over. I was watching the baseball room. games, so. Ooh, that was on on Tuesday. I watched the baseball game on Wednesday. Well, then there you go. I was disappointed. I was either watching baseball or flies. I did not See, watch like, any just, of the Jets games this week that I did not proves attend. to me once again. It's that. After watching baseball, that Cinderella stories don't exist. You can't have that story anymore. No, it's not. So it means I told everyone aren't. this. So it means the Cinderella story of Jets game McDavid is not going to happen. And it's very depressing. Oh, by the way, to the you, fan who got a oh, McDavid jersey, oh. if you ever come across this, please contact us. I just, seriously, I'll contact you. We got we got exchange I want, info. I want you on this podcast. I, I just want to ask you the thought process. I'm not going to call you stupid or anything because that's just a little outlandish. To jump the gun. I know it'd be cool. That, like, I, I get the concept where you're coming from where you're like, oh, yeah, like the Jets sucked, so I just took a chance and I bought that jersey. And then, hey, the we got one. him. And then for sure you could say you're the very first person getting a McDavid jersey. But that's crazy. Like, what if he doesn't end up on the team? It's a little nuts. Oh, yeah, right. Um, I was talking about that and then we went way off topic. In the Avs game, Ladd scored his 100th goal as a thrasher slash Jet. And in the Isles game, Ladd recorded his 200th career assist. So, Kudos to you. Oh, also, actually, Brian Little hit 300 career points sometime right. this past I week. That. I yeah. just didn't write it down. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Um, so, as I mentioned, Cam and I were at the game on... Or as Cam mentioned, we were at the game together... Uh, last Sunday. Last Sunday against the Avs. Yes. And we experienced something that I'm not a fan of. I've experienced Here. it personally, but I didn't take it to heart or like really like notice it until... My eyes were open last year, but I'll let you continue as to what we okay. saw. So, Jets fans are interesting, to say the least. And 
I'm not saying other fans in NHL cities aren't crazy or interesting. We'll They're put, passionate. Put it lightly. Passionate. All fans are passionate. Like in Montreal. Well, fan is an abbreviation of fanatic, right? Well, there you go. Well, Montreal, for example. Oh, they're crazy. They, uh, it's a religion there. Oh, yeah. They riot their own city. Oh, for I'm sure. not, I'm not Even throwing... in Vancouver, they do. Vancouver, that's different. Those those were not Vancouver fans. <laughs> right, those were. weren't Vancouver fans. Those were shit disturbers. May, hey, you know what? Maybe they're not Van- Can- Montreal fans either, but they're definitely very hyper-vigilant and excited about their team. Yeah. And, of course, when, like, victory, loss, you're passionate. It's what happens. But what did we see at this game, Greg? On the Jets. Okay. Game? First things first. I'm the realist. I knew you were gonna. Yeah. Be oh. <laughs> 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 Iggy, ah, Gigi, wow. Yeah. Thanks. I didn't know to spell Iggy. That's great. <laughs> uh, actually, I've been an NHL fan for a while, so I know how to spell Iggy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Weird. Uh, you don't like You're, fun facts, but no fun facts. Iginla me. is uh, tw- officially twenty third uh, most scorest or twenty third on the most goals in the NHL with five hundred and sixty one as of like four or five days ago. Interesting. So, or last Saturday he scored the goal to or last Friday Saturday. Either way, Iginla has five hundred and sixty one goals. <laughs> no, the stats, the Cam. He's twenty third. Come on. He's twenty third. Uh, okay. So first things first. No. Yeah, I know everyone's sing, singing in their heads right now. First things first, go. Parents, if you bring your kid at 9 or 10, or even if he's 11 or 12. No, you bring your kid, period. Bring your kid, period. You should teach him manners. Teach him some flipping manners. I know that if I was at the game, and I, I've been going to CFL games with my dad since I was 8 years old. I went to a couple Jets games as a kid. I don't personally remember because I was like 5 or 6. Yeah, me neither. Like, I remember I went to going, games. but that's it. Yep. Right, and I was always taught, you know, respect to everything that happened. Like, sure, you can do a little heckling, like, oh, you know, like yell the goalie's name or start the chance, like, you know, Crosby's better or silver medal. Like, those are fun chants. Those are like fun things to be about. Yeah. But when you start to go after the refs, and when, like, I heard the most disgusting thing ever, and it was two kids behind us yelling, "Ref, you suck!" The entire game. And honestly, I'm a hockey ref now. I'm a hockey ref again. Pardon me. And this is the culture that we're bringing into our arenas and our lo- local kids. So kids at, at hockey games, at Jets games, think that it's okay to yell, ref, you suck there. So then they go to their hockey games and they start yelling it. And you wonder why there's no respect between referee and player, referee and coach. And you wonder why there's all these fights and these chargings that happens because the parents don't teach the kids respect. And it comes from stuff like that at hockey games. Yeah, of course. And the other thing I noticed besides that, so honestly, parents, you bring your kid there, show him some respect, and when he's older, I have never participated in a ref you suck chant. Obviously, I know that refs make mistakes. But you're allowed to get on them when they make mistakes. Of course. But teaching them the difference between respect and, you know, yeah, you can razz them a little, boo them if you want for a missed call, but learn the difference between respect and disrespect. Of course. Understand that they... Like, the thing is, is if you think about it, and I know it's a really bad analogy, but it is some some sort of analogy. In the city, you have police. Those are your regulating force. When you're on the ice, the regulating force is the referees. You would never go up to a police officer for arresting you and boo in his face and say, policeman, you suck. It's a bad analogy, but it's essentially the same thing because they're both regulatory bodies in their facets. Yep. Of course. Well, and if, if the, that makes sense, yeah. Well, the kids who are raised booing the ref turn into the classy, very gentleman people that also uh, made an eleven-year-old kid cry and take off his jersey out of fear that he wouldn't make it home that night. Last year, when the Jets fans, sure, I get that a small, it's a small sample size, but, but it's the a small fact that the, size everywhere. It, it it happened though, but and they the made th- national news. The thing is, is I think it's a smaller sample size in other cities other than Winnipeg. I feel there are so many people that got tickets in Winnipeg that go with their friends, and their number one goal is, like, if you look at the demographic that got Jets season tickets, the demographic is around our age. It's twenty to thirty year olds. That yep. are upper deck season ticket holders. They're yep. 20 to 30 olds. If you look at other places, sure, it's similar. But if you go to like a Toronto or something like that, where it's just, it's a treat to go to games. 
because they're so few and far between, and because ticket holders literally go through their family cycle, right? Yes. And, like, here, it was first come, first serve, you're on, you get it. And it just seems the douchebags are just flushed through a lot quicker at Jets games. Like, you just see a lot more of them because they were able to get the tickets. They're there for two reasons. It to wasn't, get drunk it wa- and be stupid. Yeah, and it wasn't family. It wasn't, like, oh, and, like, especially when they're your family, like, your dad has has tickets to his company and whatnot. When you sit in those seats, do you ever mouth off to anyone around you? You no. might take a quick fun jab, like, oh, you weren't a Capitals jersey. Boo, Capitals. Like, jokingly. But you're not going to do anything because you're representing oh, some yeah. another entity that is not you. And so, when you have family tickets, too, you respect those rules. Oh, exactly. And... But- but what I've noticed is <laughs> that before you, before you keep going, no, not Bomber Games, yeah. is that um, every call, even just at the Avs game, but almost every call, no matter what, against or the Jets, call. or missed call, is booed, screamed at, or ref you suck chant after every call. You only see that maybe once or twice in every other arena. Sure, maybe it was only that game, but I've seen oh, it consistently just... every game I go to. It's like, I understand, like, hey, we're, we're Canadians, we should know the sport of hockey, it's ours, blah, 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 passionate and all that, but that's not an excuse for booing someone for doing their job, and they're paid to do that job, no matter what. Like, they're mm-hmm. gonna be there, and, oh, have you ever seen a call get changed because you said, oh, yeah. oh hey, <laughs> um, I didn't trip that guy, the ref's like, well, too bad, I'm not going back on my call. Have, imagine 15,000 people doing that. You think the rest can turn on some mic be like, you know what? I It's like that sports select commercial. Oh, yeah. I really dropped them all on the, that call, so this is to make up for that bad call. No, never. Uh, I actually have a story about when I made a terrible call. Okay. And, yeah, you feel like crap after you make the call, but to show that you have integrity, you got to stick to it, and nothing anyone says can change it. You can literally go to the coach and be like, I made the wrong call. That's my fault. I'm owning up to it. But there's nothing I can do about changing it. It's yeah, your call. I'm not going to... Because then if you uncall it, yeah. the other team... So, is, oh, you're on their team? Yeah. You're on that side. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, okay. We're, we're just ruthless, and it's brutal. Um, you can go back, and you can find isolated incidents in every rink. We have, honestly, some of the most belligerent and abusive fans in the NHL, period. And even... In professional sports, if you look at... Winnipeg way, as a whole, though, yeah, really. it is. Uh, you said this to me. Yeah. If you, as a Bomber fan, go to a Ryder game, you're not treated... The way the that a Ryder fan... Yeah. ...that Ryder fans get treated here. I, myself, I'll throw a jab at you. I'll be like, oh, what? If he's with a girl, I'll be like, oh, nice, you brought your sister out today, or Exactly. Whatever. Like, those kinds of jabs. Those but I'll are be like, fine. Hey, you flipping low life, like... Oh, what, did you get off the tractor today and all this stuff? Yeah, like, every like, that's single... that's not even that mean. But, I'm like, a Riders movie. fan living in Winnipeg, born and raised in Winnipeg. Greg's seen me. He's taken me to Ryder games. I've gone with him to Ryder games versus Bombers. Every single time I've gone to a game, every time I get up, every time someone walks by me, there's a jab usually thrown at me. Like, this year, for example, the first of two times I went this year when they were in, at, at Investors Group Field, the first time walking in, this guy's like, Oh, you parked your combine over there? And I turn around, like, kind of laughing. I'm like, I haven't heard this before. <laughs> uh, and then he's like, yeah, like, and I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. I, um, I'm from Winnipeg. And he's like, oh, my God, you piece of shit. And he went off on me because yeah. I was, because I support a team that isn't the team that he cheers for. And yeah. even, not even just at Bomber Games, um, at Jets Games, I used to be, key, yeah, keyword used to be, I know I'm admitting to it now, a Flames fan. I watched him from afar. But I was a Flames sign. So every time the Flames come to town, I wear my Flames jersey. Fair enough. Um, the, uh, the first time I saw them was last year when Monaghan scored the shootout winner. On the way out, I zipped... Normally I like walk away like, and I, I brought my jacket for that game. I zipped my jacket all the way up that game because... There were I, we walked past a group of friends like my friend is take Dan was taking jabs at me a little bit like, oh yeah, you're just yeah, a Flames course. fan just to get aroused. Yeah. It's true. For Flames games, it's I just fun. wear the jersey to get aroused. Well, when out of I go people. to Leaf games, I wear the jersey. Of course, and, and just... I I've, I've worn my Flyers jersey every Flyers game. Nope, that's a lie. I haven't, but I still make sure that like I like even we we clapped when the Avs scored. Or we were happy. Like who cares? Like, okay, you're not like super happy, but you're like, oh, that was a good goal. Or, exactly. Like, that was a nice play. Like it's still nice to see hockey in the city, and it's just like. If you were born around us, you you respect the Colorado Avalanche just because of how great they were. Our age group, it was but that's when they were good. That's like to, kids growing up now. Chicago to, or Pens, you can't be mad at them for liking this, teams. Like, to move yes. away from this topic, 
so we don't drain you with our fan talk. It is disgusting to know how poorly our fans treat other fans of other teams. Yes. And it is also disgusting to know that we are developing the future fans that are going to pollute, or not pollute, but populate the MTS Center in coming years with belligerency, rudeness, and disrespect. And that, to me, needs to stop. And honestly, if you look at it, if you're going to a Jets game, remember this. You're not only representing yourself, you're representing the Jets organization and True North. You want a team to stay here, you show a little respect, and you remember that it's a privilege to go to a hockey game and not a right. And yep. realize that that person that's sitting next to you wearing the opponent, opposing team's jersey... They're there for the same reason exactly. you are, to enjoy Joy a sport, watch hockey, watch their favorite team. That's what yeah. they're there for, to have a good time. When you're, sure, a fun jab is okay, yeah. but don't throw, I've seen people get throw beer thrown beers. at them. Oh. oh, a friend of ours, uh, he was an Avs fan, and in year one, he wore his Colorado Avalanche jersey. Every time the Jets scored, that was five times, because they won 5-1 that game, I believe. Um, he got the back of his head humped, dry humped, because his team got scored on. Yep, but he's a guy, he's not going to go to security, like he's no. a pretty easy go guy. If that happened to the wrong type of person who's maybe a little hot-headed, I guarantee both fight. those people, that's a fight, and both those people would be banned from the MTS Center. Yeah. Not just a humper, but the guy getting humped because who, no one wants to get humped. No, like, that's just, um, in public, dry humped. Yeah, it's, it's disgusting. It's disrespect. Yeah. disrespect. Yeah. Um, and, like, thinking that you're a tough guy because you're trying to challenge somebody in a different team's jersey, I'd be like, I'm a Jets fan. Yeah. Like, this is I'm our house or rules. Yeah. Doesn't no. matter. No, like, it's... Just, a little respect, and it's, it's just it's disgusting when you see stuff like this, and it's very. I, I, honestly, I classify the team, I classify fans of Jets in five categories: the diehard, which are me and Cam. Even though we don't watch every game, we still live and by die, live and die by the sword of the team. If the team does poorly, we're still upset, even though we don't think the team is that great. Shut up, phone. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, and like, we own jerseys. We know. We understand hockey. We have the knowledge. And sure, we cheer for other teams sometimes. And we understand there's bad calls made, but we're not going to boo the ref. Exactly. Because, hey, you know what? He made a bad call earlier. He's just, You know what? If he's going to make bad calls, make it both ways. If exactly. he's going to be call a great game, call it both ways. And a we great, understand that. A great example of that is the Lightning game. Where there were mediocre calls both ways. Oh, yes. Of, of course. Calls. Yeah, there was like the BOGO one, and then there was the... Um, the Johnson one the Johnson one. Like yeah or Kai yeah where he drove the net and he got the penalty yeah. yes okay or like at least the thing is is you look at something like this I don't know who was watching the game last night but to point point to our ref thing Washington Detroit yesterday Detroit scored a goal and was called for goaltender interference because Holtby fell down what actually happened was Holtby played the puck came out from behind the net and tripped over himself over himself yeah. and the puck went in and they called a goaltender interference penalty. In Winnipeg, that guy would have been berated with whatever, and I, for, know the game, I would I the would argue for the full two minutes. Oh, the yes. game was in Washington, yes, but even the comments on Facebook and Instagram were like, "That was a bad call," but it wasn't like I'm going to murder that ref like it would be in Winnipeg. I understand yeah. there's a level of diehard, but there's the stupidity, and that's the next bracket which is the complainer slash angry person that okay. every time something negative happens it's a let's trade this player you gave the puck up or oh my god i can't believe that uh the refs aren't calling that like the guy that was sitting behind us it was like oh that's a hold that's all why isn't that a hold oh yeah and oh, he's apparently leaning over. he only knows the hold call he's it's leaning like, over to the person and then like when he made a hold call he's like talking out loud as if he knew he's like ha, yeah told you guys he only calls holds mm -hmm. that's correct and then like he's trying to call for like he's like that's slash a slat no that's what they do every time they go. Or in the when corner. Toby enters the zone and there's three, how many three defenders in front of him oh, usually, yeah. and he's like, "Shoot it!" Oh yeah, because <laughs> you're gonna shoot it at the guy's chest five feet in front of him. That'll work. Yeah. Great, excellent, sir. Okay, so you have the diehards, the complainers, slash angry persons, the drunks that just go to games to get absolutely belligerent drunk, and that's normally the guys that treat other people with disrespect. Once again. Very small yourself. sample size, but very, yes. Uh, well, very small sample size. No, no, size, sales, there is... small sample size and only go to the game to get drunk. Yeah. Because then at that point, I know who you're talking about because Dan had a few guys in front of them, season ticket holders, but they, on average, went through four beers a game. And a beer is nine fifty. So yeah. let's round it up to 10 You're spending $40 a game for yeah. 40 I know people What's that 40 spend times... the average 120 bucks when they go to hockey games. Because why are they there? To get drunk. I've seen people tweet 
If you're not going to the MTS Center with at least six beers in you, you're doing it wrong. Really? What? Why do you need to I be drunk? I can't afford to that, get... sir. No, but like, a... why do you need to be drunk to go to a sporting event? It's never made sense to me. Yeah, it's their best revenue. So yeah, keep hacking, jacking up the prices. I'm not going to buy a beer at the Jets game. I don't find drinking at a, uh, at a game and being stupid or falling or tripping or doing something dumb, running into the wrong guy, and then I, I'm not going to back down if I'm drunk because I've got that extra bit of, you know... Gumption drunk, and like testosterone. Too. Yep, and exactly. It's like, just stupid things happen. So if you're gonna get drunk and like yeah. you want to like yell, just stay at home. Yeah, just don't be. Don't stupid. waste everyone's time. You're you're inconveniencing yeah. everyone. Okay, so uh, that's, that's we're sitting at three. three. Number four is the bystander, the person, in my opinion, that just goes to games to enjoy it, and they whatever they get free tickets or they, they were given couple. tickets and they yeah. they Instagram like yeah. half the game roughly oh, yeah. or they'll Snapchat but, but like, Instagram it's like Jets what? game you and I always want to do and I a friend of mine who I work with his his thing is he's like yeah I always want to reply like you and hashtag fifteen thousand and four other people <laughs> <laughs> well like the thing with with uh, with like the bystander for me is. Is some of them, yeah, they're there to Instagram or Twitter, like to put it out there. But yeah. some of them are there just to, you know, I'm gonna enjoy what the city. They has might to offer. not be a Jets fan, and yeah. do you really want them to run into a complainer or a drunk? No, no. like especially if you they're even the, if they're sitting in the same section. You want this team to stay? You got to maximize how many people can go to games. And, and that's if, you and want everyone. Honestly, you don't want to like want stupid people at every game. Honestly, I'm not saying I'm. A genius when it comes to hockey, but I know my shit. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna. Say, I can hold. We a know more than the average Joe per yeah. se. Yeah, there you I go. understand a lot more than the, the average person. Yeah, and we have a lot of hockey idiots in Winnipeg. Period. Yes, we have a lot of people who think they know stuff, and then you're like, oh, what about this player? Oh, yeah. he's in our system, or like, oh, did you know that Nicholas Patan uh, played for Team Canada last year? Or did you know that like, you know, yeah. you you start saying stuff, and they're like, oh, I didn't know that, like. Oh, go Bufflin. And it's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Oh, another thing that, um, about those fans is that I remember going to, um, the preseason with you when you brought me to the preseason. Yeah, um, I walked back when I was, I went and got my drink and I walked past a gentleman and he's like, Oh, I can't believe we drafted that Danish kid. You know, that guy from Anaheim, Nick Ritchie. Yeah. The dude's six, three, like six, three, like two fifteen. He's an animal. That's what you want on the team. You don't want these little guys. And I'm like, are you? Okay, I get the argument of the size, but the league is going in a different way. Like now, there is space for little guys because the they're speed. born in. It's not like they, they were just learned how to play hockey a week ago. <laughs> it's like they've been avoiding hits their whole life, so that's oh, why no. where they are now. Oh. Like Nick Patan, he looked great for most of the preseason. It's just he's not he's ready not just yet. yet. And you watch once those once those little guys start making it, they're gonna be like, yeah. You know what? I knew it. I knew he was on the team the whole time. It's like no, you did not. You did not, <laughs> sir. So, and then the fifth and the last one is the reminiscer slash they've got to go. The people who think, one, well, the Jets should move now, they're not going to be successful here. Or the people that are like, I remember when the Jets were here last time. This is the same as last time. They're not going to last, period. Um, just from the grapevine on the Jets, Blake Wheeler scored. It is now one nothing Winnipeg, 13-04 into the first. Excellent. That's just for me and Cam Noe, because you guys are probably listening to this and already know the score of the game. But yeah, that is correct. That, that is for the fans that don't watch the game, yet somehow talk about the Jets on a podcast. <laughs> okay, so we're short on time here. Yep. Uh, uh, let's just let's just get into the mailbag. Okay. We might run a little long. Sorry, we're going to go off the over the hour time limit, but that's totally fine by me. Just going straight into mailbag? Okay, you go mailbag, mailbag first because I have a few things. Oh, Ooh. can I mention, are we doing? Are we going to do injuries and then milestones and then mailbag? No, we do. Injuries are part of... Mailbag oh, and milestones. Okay, perfect. And then you go. 15. Well, McDavid, we always clean up. With. I know. We always clean, clean up. Okay, you it. go. You go with your okay. mailbag. Uh, the first piece of news that we have is NHL great Gordy Howe suffered a stroke over the uh, I think it was a Tuesday. Over this he, past week. Over this past week, and uh, he is recuperating, um, and he's fine. But our thoughts and prayers go out to one of to Mr. Hockey and one of the great NHL players. Um, yeah, his health has been depleting in the last yes, couple of years. Yes, and it is disappointing. He yeah. is one of the only hockey players to play, I believe, in four different generations. Really? Four diff- So, four different decades or something like that. He's he- so good that his offspring is in the Hall of Fame. Mark Howe, for sure. I don't oh, know. He's about. so, like... I don't know. Gordie Howe is one of the one of the all-time greats, and it's it's just impressive. 
Okay. Um, next thing that I noticed, I was just looking at stats today, was Tyler Toffoli and Tanner Pearson. Shocking starts for the both of them. Tyler Toffoli, 11 points. Tanner Pearson, 7 goals. Is it shocking stats? Because I believe Kelly Rudy last year in the playoffs, Stanley Cup final, he was like, oh yeah, the, uh, the Carter Toffoli Pearson line would not surprise me if each of them had 80. And at the time, Twitter yeah. went ablaze. Oh, I because that. they were like, oh, uh, Kelly Rudy, you idiot. There's only <laughs> been like six guys in the league with 80 plus points this year. Um, Kelly Rudy, you're looking pretty good right now. <laughs> if they keep up this torrid pace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, what else we got? Um, well, I should I go get band aids before we talk about Columbus? I don't want to oh, get hurt. I don't want to get hurt too. Yeah, like, I, I don't, I don't, no, don't get move. Hurt. You'll stub oh, yourself. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Hold still. We're gonna get hurt here. So I'm going to jump over this chair Let's, and break my face. Do, are, do you want to start the Columbus train ride? <laughs> no, you can start it. Go okay. Uh, so Nick Foligno got hit into a rough and got taken out on a stretcher. So far, apparently he's doing okay, but he will be out a little while. Uh, not uh, uh, extended, ex- a long stay. Um, Artem Anisimov, he's out one week with a concussion. Brandon Dubinsky's out with an uh, abdominal injury. Uh, do you know the length on that one? Who? Uh, Dubinsky. It's fine. I'll Dubinsky, just keep going. Uh, okay, yeah, keep it's going. fine. Keep uh, Matt Calvert is out because he got cut by a skate. He's a precautionary. Boone Jenner has a broken hand. Nathan One Horton, two weeks. Nathan Horton uh, with his back. Uh, unknown. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mark Letestu, uh groin injury. Uh, one to two weeks, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that. James Wisniewski, one of their best defensemen, a uh, broken finger at one to two weeks. And Bobrovsky, broken finger at one to two weeks. <laughs> I just named two full forward lines. One of their best defensemen and their top goalie. Who does Columbus have? Anybody? Hello? No. no. You got a phone call. I got a phone call. Okay, who's oh, that? It's the Columbus Blue Jackets gym. You, you want, want me to play? You want me to play? You want me to play? Big man. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. no. I stubbed my toe. That hurt a lot, actually. Broken toe. Broken toe. Greg's out one to two weeks. Oh, no. Ow, that actually hurt so much. Did he? Greg actually did take quite a tumble into a wooden chest that's in his room. I don't know what's in it, but it looked pretty solid. It's Greg. a toy box and has toys in it. Yes, I'm You're, a 23-year-old man with toys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we all got toys. Um, what else? Oh, injuries. Uh, I'll just oh. shore up the injuries while Greg fixes his injury. Ben Lovejoy out six to eight weeks with a fractured finger. Ben Lovejoy. Stick to making love. You're a lover, not a fighter, because you broke your finger in a fight. Uh, and also 24-7 from the first year when he, his face was, like, Yeah, imploded. Ben Lovejoy, it's in your name. Just your love. love brings joy to people. Whoever you bring that love to brings joy to people. Yeah, if it was Crosby when you were back in... Uh, okay, sir, just, sir. Speaking of the Penguins, wow, they're oh, tying. Oh. Oli Mata will have Ooh, surgery yeah. to remove a low-grade thyroid that cancer. Crazy. He's out four weeks, or estimated four weeks. Tori Krug is out two to three weeks with oh. a broken finger. So maybe I could play on the Boston Blue Line. Oh, yeah, Boston Blue Because they have no one. There was a gentleman, Steve Dangle. Tara. Who, uh, didn't McQuaid get hurt, too, or is it I just Tara, so. Krug, McQuaid? Everyone, everyone's feelings, because yeah. Johnny Boychuk, uh, mama. There's a guy on Twitter, we'll link him in the description below. Yeah. Uh, he also has we'll a podcast, tweet his which link. is amazing. Or we'll tweet his tweet. We'll retweet, we'll retweet his tweet. it. But his yeah. tweet basically said, breaking the Columbus Blue Jackets and Boston Bruins are combining their teams to field one healthy NHL team. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, any in- Was there suspensions or anything this week? Uh, no. Oh, but yes. Yes, no, there was. There were two. Uh, yeah, John Scott, yep. the league's re- re- idiot. Yep, the league, the, nice save. The league <laughs> idiot. Not the village. He is the league idiot, and he should be kicked out of hockey for being a disgrace to the game. Because, what is he there? He's a goon. He, I think I could play better. I could. I know I'm a better hockey player than John Scott. I'm just going to go on there and say it. I'm a beer league hockey player. I am a better hockey player than John Scott. John Scott is there for one reason, one reason only. To yep. punch people. Yep. That is it. And he He's got two foot. games for coming, leaving the bench to go fight someone Legally. in the Ducks. Legally. There Legally? was a legal line change. However, because his line... he essentially changed lines to go after someone. He legally changed lines to go after somebody and fight them. It should have been a 10-game suspension. And you know what? I want to make a movement. And Steve Dangle mentions this in his latest Steve Dangle podcast. So, Steve, if you're listening to this or if you even come across this... Big fan. Thank you. I'm a huge fan. You're awesome. But I'm stealing this from you and saying that... No, you're not stealing. You're just spreading the word. Okay, I'll spread the word. Stick to the ball should be, once again, like leaving the bench, an automatic 10-game suspension. And what are you referring this from? That's what Steve said. 
Oh, no, oh but Chris Kreider does it. And Chris Kreider hit Jonas Brodin. And Jonas Brodin is Chris Kreider did not get suspended for that. And he did not get suspended John for Moore it. got suspended for that hit on Eric Halle. Yeah. And Chris Kreider Didn't. hit Brodin before the goal line. Oh, and into the boards. It, Back. It, it all number. Ridiculous. Chris Kreider. And then he did the thing to Price last year in the playoffs. The guy injures people. That's what he does. That one out with Price was garbage. You can't blame him. For, have I you ever tried moving when you're getting I pushed? Know. I don't blame him. But he is... he. Borders that on the one, line of being reckless. Yes. And he sometimes goes too far on recklessness. Yes. But if course. you look back even to last year in the playoffs, what was the big storyline? There was a lot of people just sticking people in the nuts. Milan Lucic got um be- was that in the- no, before the I, playoffs started, he got fined five thousand dollars for spearing. He did it three times, I believe, last year. Emelin, De Kaiser, and Yemelin again. But <sighs> when he I but whoever he got fined five thousand dollars for, the equivalent of Lucic getting fined five thousand dollars is if a standard Canadian citizen who makes thirty thousand dollars a year got fined gets fined twenty eight dollars. Yeah. It's- if if I made thirty thousand dollars a year, I do not currently. Um if I did and it only cost me $28 to spear someone in the nuts, I would do it probably once a month, however, just for fun. However, it would cost you $56 to grab your own grab your own dick at the ref. Oh, yes, right. Remember that joke? Yeah, it, thing? yeah. yeah well, Jeez. don't touch your own nuts. Touch other people's yeah, nuts. Yeah, just is what stick them and make them not be able to reproduce. There yeah, exactly. But no, uh... They should 10-game suspension. Cause should. That, it that, just needs to be shut up. That's causing warfare on their own being. Like there, that, that could cause serious damage. Well, there's that, and that's the fact that it just it it's stupid and it's a disgrace to the game. Yep. And it, like people always talk about how uh, hockey's somewhat of a gentleman's game, how they always shake hands in the line after playoff games, and how it's you know two two teams battling, but at the end there's always respect. There's that borderline of them losing respect now because of the way they're treating each other. Yes. And yeah, okay, we've lost some of the toughness from the '90s. But we don't need to replace the toughness from, like, the 90s era in let's just spear people. Because soon we're going to escalate to the fact that we're not beating people with their own shoe. We're going to be beating people with their st- with our sticks in the face while we go in the fans. Or go in the stands. You're talking about Mike Melbury. Yeah, I'm talking about Mike Melbury. Because we got to one-up what they did in the past. Oh, we're trying to set yeah. a mark. Okay, yeah, we're trying I... to set a mark. It's going to be more extreme than before. I went really extreme with that one, actually. Yeah. Talk about setting marks. We'll move on from this. Milestones hit this week. Oh. Patrick Kane hit his 500th career point. Who would it have been assisted by? None other than... Marion Hosa. No. Jonathan come, Taves? Of course Jonathan Taves. <laughs> I don't know. Good well, old man. Told that, I was going to be like, well, oh. Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves. Go yeah, hand yeah. in hand. Another one is Pascal Dupuis hit his 400th career point. I'm not I'm not saying you're not a talented gentleman, Pascal Dupree, but you probably definitely owe Sidney Crosby a few steak dinners over your career because I don't think you <laughs> And maybe half your contract. <laughs> <laughs> maybe half your contract. Another thing that I was um, that I saw was Patrick Elias, um I like I just was thinking about Patrick Elias. How yeah, he's good, still in the NHL. How good is Patrick Elias and how good has Patrick Elias earned other people money? Um I'm gonna name a few people who earn money. Okay, Scott Gomez. You're welcome. Thank you, Patrick Elias. Um, David Clarkman. Thank you, Patrick Elias. There's and one I more. Like Kovalchuk. I like Kovalchuk can be thankful for the David Clarkman thing. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, there's one more player. I'm just, it's drawing a blank right now. But... Brian. Oh, yeah. Ryan Klo. Ryan, Ryan Klo. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, no, no. Ryan no, Klo Ryan played Klo with went, went there. Uh, either way, those two players, thank you, Patrick Elias. You're an excellent player. <laughs> like, that's... You, make, you make the players around you better. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Uh, oh, another milestone! Another guy approaching a milestone. Approaching a milestone, okay. Marion Hosa, all right, of the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, is approaching. I believe it's a thousand career points. Oh yeah, in four years less than the guys who are about to uh, St. Louis and. and uh, oh, I know. I'm gonna say who? I'm gonna say my 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 Gusta. I'm going on somebody's uh, Twitter to look at this. Actually, that is fine. While you go uh, find that, okay. Have you guys- is actually a part of Ilyash. Okay, are the three closest guys to a thousand. So Hosa, Ilyas, and Saint Louis. And Hosa has been playing four years less, and than four years younger. Oh, younger. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Wow. Now, funny. Who is the top? Okay. Whew. Uh, okay. Only sixteen defensemen have more career points than me, and I'm still in the NHL. Who am I? Who's that again? Okay. From Steve Dangle's Twitter. We're just pumping your tires, Steve Dangle. So yeah. if you don't know who he is, check him out. He's awesome. Uh, most underrated 
maybe another underrated guy is only 16 defense and have more career points than, I, than me, and I'm still in the NHL. Who am I? No I, cheating. He's a defenseman. Still in the only NHL. Only 16 career players have is, more points than him. More career points than him. And he's still an active defenseman. Dan Boyle. Negative. Sergey Gonchar. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy, eh? And so not counting Chris Pronger, Timonen and Boyle and Chara are the highest uh, active all-time scoring defensemen. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's something else. Which means, like, when you think about it, we've gone through a pretty good era of hockey. When you see these guys, like, breaking milestones of... You know, I think it's some like 80 other people have broken a thousand points in their career, and Host is doing it at his age. Like, when you think Host, you think he's been in the league. He's like 38, but he's, I believe, 33. He might be. He well, might be 32. Well, there, yeah, no, he's, I always think he's of him like as an super old dude. Old, but he's not super old at all. Did he, he must have joined when he was very young then. Yeah, I think he made Atlanta out of. No, he was an Ottawa Senator. And then he was an Atlanta Thrasher. And then a Pittsburgh Penguin. And then and Detroit. A, and then a Chicago Blackhawk. And a Chicago Blackhawk. Yeah, that must have been a whirlwind of a ride from Marion Hossa. Would you want to do that for Marion Hossa, though? Because he got to lose a cup twice in a row. By whirlwind, I mean that. And then win two, I think. I don't think Marion Hossa's upset about those two Of course losses. not. And he's represented his country on many occasions. Yeah. For Czech Republic. And I, you know what? Uh... Wait, Czech Republic, right? Yeah, he's Czech Republic. Okay. No! no? He's Slovak? No. I think we he's have Slovakian. the internet. We could always he's use Slovakian. that. Okay. Screw the internet. Screw the what, internet. What do people know on the internet? We don't need it. Banana. We don't need it. We just need more Canadians and more OHL Toronto-born players on our Straight teams. from the Mimco. Straight from Mimco. Oh, that's another milestone. That was it. Ooh. Sorry to cut you off. Jonathan Quick officially passed oh, Rogi yes, Vachon for a career shutouts a, a franchise leader with 33. And so, he's nowhere near done. No, and sir. And you know who is apparently nowhere near done as well? Yummer Biz Yager. Nasty. Oh, yeah. He's he signed with a, the Portland Pirates. He signed a PTO NHL. with the Portland Pirates. AHL affiliate to the... New Jersey Devils. Arizona Coyotes, sir. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Oh. So he's working his way back. He's working city. his way back onto the Arizona Coyotes. Somehow, some way. I have one more thing before we hit Conor McDavid. Of course. Watch 2015. Mm-hmm. Hashtag 2015 Conor McDavid. HockeyReference.com, where I go to get all my advanced stats in Corsi. Okay. They still have Winnipeg listed as ATL. Could you guys please, if, you, if you're a part of Hockey Reference or you know the guys of Hockey Reference, let them know that they still have Winnipeg as ATL. And me, as a Winnipeg person looking up their Corsi, I would like to know when I'm looking for WPG to look f- for WPG and not for ATL, which is stupid. That's my one gripe. That's it. Let's get to Connor McDavid watch 2015. McDavid 2015. Connor McDavid 2015. Let's do this. Let's do this. Where is Connor McDavid sitting at? Oh, well, you're oh, looking geez. up this. No, I already have it. I, I have will it. I will retweet. David watch 2015. I will retweet. Oh. Um You have the, a lot of things to retweet. I know I'm ready. I'm trying to write notes down as they're talking about them. Like I you, you know what I have. You actually have to remember to do it. I've been doing it every I don't time. I, I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying you just have to remember to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm writing them down right okay, now. Good. Um Connor See, this McDavid. Is why you're a producer. Yeah. Connor McDavid. You do he stuff. broke a puck in practice. He exploded it on the crossbar. Connor McDavid is stronger than pucks and crossbars. <clears throat> you want to open that drape? There's about 10 broken pucks there. Yeah, well, guess what? Connor McDavid did it indoors and playing practice. He wasn't even. You know, practice is? It's practice. It's not the game. It's practice. We're not we're not talking about game. We're talking about practice. No, hey. not not the game I go out and die for. I'm talking about practice. You play to, no, I'm not I'm not getting into really awful. We're not getting into the T S N top ten like <laughs> hockey or like sound bites. or sports sound bites. Alright, what did Connor McDavid do? He now has thirty four points in twelve games, which is just under three point average per game. Hey Connor McDavid, get on my level. I have a three point three three in beer league. Get on that level. Hey, Conor McDavid, if there's anything I can ask of you, it's please stay healthy. Canada really wants that gold medal. Yes. No, you know what? Screw that. Canada wants a medal. (laughs) I don't care. I'll I'll settle for a medal. I love how it's been been so long. I don't even remember. (laughs) I just just want a medal. You want to know something really interesting about the... I don't know if they still do it because I don't own a um, Canada jersey. But back in the days of like 2000... I think it was 2003. 2010 till the new, new issue jerseys came out. 
uh, they would always, with the crest, they'd always embroider the crest with the color that they won the previous year in metal. Really? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see the example. Let me get my... I definitely pen. know. Do you have the black alternate? Because I, I definitely know the black alternate is... Oh, no. Okay. Man. I didn't even think of this. So... Greg went into his closet. That's gold. Yeah. For when they won gold. I have another one from the year after Mark andre hit the ass of what you, of who you call it. And it's silver. It's silver embroidered. It's, it was the silver one. I have it somewhere. Well, I'm looking at it right now. It, wow. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. Like... The and new ones that. don't even have... It's the 100th anniversary one, so it just says Canada. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I noticed that, uh, that they did you that. You noticed that? I noticed, noticed that, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, McDavid, stay healthy. We need you. Now, the bottom five teams in the NHL. The bad of the bad. Carolina Hurricanes still don't have a win. Really? Still don't have a win. Okay, Carolina, that's 30. That's got that's it? That's last place team at 0-6-2. Okay. Then we got the good old Buffalo Sabres, who had mustered a whole... Ten shots against Toronto in their four nothing loss on Tuesday. Okay. I was glad I had Bernier in fantasy. Okay, who's twenty eighth? Twenty eighth is the Arizona I almost said Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Coyotes. Car- Cardinals are just as good as the Coyotes on us. Actually <laughs> oh pr- probably better. <laughs> okay. Might draw more fans too. Who knows? Like, hey, wanna watch Carson Palmer play hockey? Watch Larry Fitzgerald play That'd hockey. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I think we found a way to attract fans to Arizona. The Cardinals versus We're Coyotes. We're switching game. places. <laughs> Starting yes. quarterback Shane Doan. <laughs> <laughs> wait, start wait. wide out Oliver Ekman Larson. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. Who would be there? Who would be like their star defensive player though? Who's that? They'd have to bring back Paul B. No, Smith. Mike Smith, middle linebacker. Oh, he's yes. got the hair. <laughs> oh, he totally does. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Uh, who else do they have on that team? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, continuing. Uh, who is 27th? 27th is the Florida Panthers, who've only played seven games this year. And they're, they're bad. They're not Buffalo bad or Carolina bad. And don't then, you be smack talking that Bobby Lou. I'm drinking that Lou juice. See, the thing <laughs> is, is I still think they could be decent this year. Not yeah, like, me too. Not like I'm talking out I'm of the bottom like five. I'm talking like 40 percent. point score here, Greg. That's wow. how good I'm talking. They Ooh, might even that's have, bold. They might that's even have bold. a 40 point score and two 20 point scores. Oh. Dare I say it. Wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> For those who don't know, Florida did not have a 40 point goal score or 40 point score last year. 38 points. Nick Buke's dad. Yep. As a rookie. Wow. <laughs> yep. Where's Jonathan Huberto? <laughs> I thought Nick Bukestad should have won the Calder. I mean, Nathan McKinnon had line mates. <laughs> <laughs> and who exactly. is 26, farthest away from that Conor McDavid press? Colorado. No! Oh, yeah, we talked about that last time. <laughs> Guys, seriously, what the hell is in that water? Oh, my God. That's so creepy. It's so creepy. Yeah. All the nines. It's just, it's just destined. It's destiny. What if they, like... What if Connor Bleakley shows up? He's like, yeah, we're 91. Can you do something for me right sure. now? Sure. Can you Google Connor Bleakley? And Currently? S- no, uh, you Google Connor Bleakley. I want to see a picture. I want to see it. Oh my uh, God, what if he's 19 or something? I don't want to see this. I'm scared. Here, <laughs> here on the uh, podcast, oh, we geez. create conspiracy uh, theories. No, you don't. He wears nine. No, he doesn't. He no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Sweet mama. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Again. The <laughs> curse. The curse is upon us. The prophecy is revealed. <laughs> Satan, Satan, Satan. If you, if you didn't watch last, if you didn't listen last week, this is the last five minutes. <laughs> the last five minutes of last week, we have like, uncovered the Colorado conspiracy <laughs> that they only want players who wear the number nine, like Joe Sackick. Oh, and who else? Do the they number have? nine involved in their number. Exactly. Oh Joe Sackick, Matt Duchesne, Ryan O'Reilly, Gabriel <laughs> Landis. <laughs> Nathan McKinnon. Can you and do something? Hold Blakely. on, I want you to Google one more thing. Joey Hishin. Um, or 39. Oh, no, no, hold on. Joey Hishin, uh, what team uh, did he play Owen for? Owen Sound Attack. Owen Sound Attack. I think he wore 18. I think we're safe. But 8 plus 1 is 9. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we're reading a little too much. It is 18. Okay. But Connor Bleakley is number 9, guys. Okay. Closing words, Greg? Thing, well, the thing with Hishin is he's not like an uh, A plus prospect yet, so like... Who knows? Maybe one day he could be there. He did get hit pretty hard in that Mem Cup. One second. 
I have another conspiracy theory. Okay, Greg, here we go. This is where conspiracy... See, this is this is why Greg and I can't do the show on our own, because Dan's just like, this is stupid. What are we talking This is dumb. This is dumb. Matt Duchesne, what numbers does he wear? Nine. What year was he drafted? 2009. 2009. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> the perfect thing. Nine and nine. You guys, what did we just learn? Matt Duchesne is not being traded from the Colorado Avalanche. It will can't, be everyone but... Can't ever get traded, Ever. <laughs> Ever. Who else did Colorado draft in the 2009 entry draft? I don't know. Uh, this is terrible. Why are we doing this? I don't know. Ryan O'Reilly! No, they didn't! <laughs> no, they didn't! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is happening to the world? Then Tyson Berry, who does not wear number nine. Okay, okay. <laughs> what number did Berry get drafted? What number are these guys getting drafted at? Third, third round, 64th overall. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Greg, Greg, Greg! Third round, 64th overall? Yeah. What's 3 plus 6? And what number does Saints and Barry wear? What? 3 plus 6 is 9. What number does Tyson Barry wear? Four. Third round, 60. No, oh just nine again. Nine comes up everywhere. See, nine is in the water. At nine is in the water. It's in the water. Follow the water. Bam, dan, dan. Grand Lurk and bring it back to me. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, okay, we gotta finish There's it. No way we... Brandon Maxwell wears number 29. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're digging real deep there. Is this our seventh round pick? This is uh, number, I don't even know. Click a picture, Greg. I, I don't want it to be 29. Oh, okay, that's too fuzzy. I don't know. He's number 29! No, he isn't! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> No. Our fourth round, no. <laughs> our fifth round pick in the 2009 NHL draft. Where's 29? No. This is gonna be no. Greg and I, we're starting this. This is a this is a series of Colorado. We're finding the nines. We will find you nine. My goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen, we have discovered the greatest sports. Mystery in all of sports. We're gonna get a call from Joe Sackerson. You're gonna stop reporting on this stuff immediately. Period. Never again. <laughs> you we don't speak of this. You done both diddly, and now you got a jangle, son. You're losing it. <laughs> wait, wait. I want to check something. We'll check uh, do we have like a thing. central? Do we have a central scouting list for this season? Let's go to the central scouting list. There must be. We're already at, like, well over an hour I now. I don't care anymore. We're checking. I don't care anymore. 2014? Or is that going to be this year? Yeah, it should be this year. The Michael Delco, no, that's last year. Okay. Uh, let's go 20. Oh, here it is. McDavid top. Let's see Let's see who number five is. I'm scared. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know either. Oh, it's not going to give me a list, is it? Shoot. Here, go to the... Just oh, there, my... it is. there it is. Preliminary players to watch. Okay. So let's, let's Connor look. McDavid, Jack Eichel, Noah oh, Hannafin. It's, it's in flipping order. This sucks. I want an, like I want a rank list here. Oh, that sucks. Just type in my NHL like mock drafts or something like that, oh, and we will go off that player. 2015 NHL entry draft rankings projections. Here we go. Twenty fifth. Oh, geez, this is just getting more and more ridiculous. We're already in it. We're done <sighs> in it there. Oh, well, they're... Okay, fifth overall they have is Paul Bittner. What number does Paul Bittner wear for the Portland Winterhawks? He can't wear 19, but Tan wears 19. Yeah, but what if he wears number 9? Ta uh, no, Taylor Lear wears 9. What if he wears, like, 39? Google him. I, I will. You guys. They can't pick him, then. There's Ooh. no way they can pick him. He does not follow the rules. Because the nine. prophecy is not <laughs> correct. They're getting Connor McDavid. We know this. That's true. Oh, man, they're going to lose. Ah, uh, looks like he's number seven. <sighs> or number five. Weight off my chest. Or Wait. 95. Oh, but he wears 18 for Team USA. What does that equal? One plus nine. <laughs> One plus eight is nine. Satan. We're Satan. looking way too far into this. Okay, guys, game. this is where we leave you. Closing words, Greg? Thank you for listening, and uh, check out all the links below in the description. And if you're listening No links to in the description. Why? No, there's... I retweet them. Well, and also put links in the description. What links to in people? Ah, the... uh, like Steve Dangle. 
Um, Put their podcast and stuff in there? So if you're listening oh, to this on, on the iTunes, YouTube. On the YouTube. And then on iTunes, the I will... There won't be any links on iTunes. There will be links retweeted from our podcast. There you go. Which will be... Travis Hamnick, E60. Uh, Dangle, I have the Gonchar tweet. What was the other tweet we were going to talk about? Uh, the breaking... Uh... Breaking, yes, got it. No, that's yeah. all I need. Okay, okay. Yeah. hockeyreference.com. I'll just read their link because it's excellent website. It's excellent website, but if you're looking for Winnipeg, it's under ATL. That's fine. Okay, uh, we have the broken puck, and um, that, that should be it, I believe. Yeah. All right, well, until next time, my name's Cam. I'm Greg. Enjoy and, your... No, and vote if you want Dan back or not. Yeah, Dan, we're voting off the only. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> <laughs> See, voting, bye. <laughs>